Hi, my name's Adam and I'm here to show you how to make a boule, an adventure figure, uh, which is basically a land shark. So, first thing is, uh, we had a look on Thingiverse and we found uh, there's a nice little character on there. It's a bit large, unfortunately, if you try and download it, it's quite a massive file. So I sort of redid that uh, in GrabCAD and then downloaded it and made a base and this will form the uh, model. So then we put it into uh, the 3D printer and you can see here printed out at about 0.1 resolution actually, quite a fine one, um, and printed in a PLA. Uh, and when that was ready, we're on to the next stage of preparing it. Just pop up one part of the brim like that. Now it's a question of taking off uh, the support material, which should, because it's cold, come off fairly easy. Some of the larger parts, just the brim off. So we're going to um, put a little mount on this so that we can paint it a little easier. We're going to drill a little hole through the bottom. And you can feel it going through into the infill actually. That'll do. And then I'm just going to take a uh, cocktail stick. the end off like that. We get a little bit of super glue. Oop. And there. And we just place that in there like that and let that dry and that will give us somewhere something to hold it to when we're painting so I'm going to give this uh, an undercoat um, and though normally could do it in grey I think with a white we're not going to actually see anything come up on that so not very easily so I'm going to use some uh, black surface primer it's really just to give a key for the top coats to hang on to, so. Let's go over that. And then probably after, just probably give the under, underneath of it a brown with a sort of, maybe a sort of gunmetal gray
take out some of the lines from the prints. They're not going to, not going too mad. Um, so you don't want to get it to like running or spidering. So just leave that to dry for a bit, um, and then I might just come back and give that another coat in a couple of seconds. Shouldn't take too long to dry actually, it's almost pretty much dry. Um, if these weren't like LED lights, you might even get some heat off the lamps to run it along, but we'll just see how that goes in, the, in a few seconds. Maybe a minute. Got it in uh, primer, um, I'm going to give the um, undercoat, underside, um, got some brown uh, decline declinoleum um, seems like a good enough uh, brown for this so I'm going to take a little bit of that I've got some of this uh, airbrush thinner okay, one, two, three, four couple of drops of that like milk they say so it's a kind of milk <laughs> in fact I've known been known to just mix it in the bowl straight a lot of the time see what this comes out like there's some little details in there that I think once we've uh, even sprayed it with the top, the top bit we're going to have to go back in with a brush just to sharpen up some of those details make sure we've got some left Now, because that stick, of course, at the end, um, I'm just going to cut that flush and then file it flat. You'll never see it underneath. Um, that's a pretty good. Pretty good, much got that covered. And you can miss it a little bit when the wash is and put a, like a blacking wash on it. That's 
cover up some of this uh, amateur airbrushing. We go and pick it out some of these bits afterwards. I think it's with red. I've been looking at some pictures of uh, some artist impression work and drawings and stuff on the uh, internet. So I think that'll do for the moment. There you go. That's uh, one part done. Actually, one of the things I'm going to do, obviously. You, you, you do this every single time, which is like a bit of a pain with airbrushes, but you have to give them a clean out. And um, I've nearly used all that up, but I'm going to pour that in there. I have plenty of tissues on hand to give these a wipe out. So get the bulk of it out like that, and you can run just water through them or um, I've got some of this oh, airbrush cleaner as well it's probably water <laughs> no and then one of the tricks I've seen as well is like put your finger over the end build some pressure up and then just bubble it back in through the chamber you can see that in there so, so it's giving it like a bit of a back flush Dump that out. Give it another bit of a wipe. Gives it a bit of a head start when you clean it. Put a few more drops in, like that. And just run it out in one of these pots. So I've got one of these. Ooh. So you can make one or pick them up on the internet fairly cheap. Um, and just spray it through. And they've got a little filter in there as well, which is like a one of these little discs stops it smelling up and coming out of everywhere. So. And still it's starting to sort of steam a little bit after a while. So it starts running through. There you go. That's fairly cleaned out and that's ready for the uh, next colour which I'm going to have a look for and I think I might use a grey. I think I've got an old dark grey for that one so uh, watch that in a second. So we've got this dry-ish, and what we're going to do now is we've got some uh, some of this one, which is a, a, a Tamiya Dark Grey XF24. Try and be careful with this, of course, so you don't want too much over spray, if any, on the lower part. But what we'll do as well is we'll keep the pots of paint that we've uh, poured back out, and we can use those to touch up touch up straight cover up afterwards.
me just keep checking the uh, doing some flow out of that. It's harder to tell when the colours are a bit darker like this, but. There actually this time. Too bad a job on that one. I don't think you can see that's coming on. And what we'll probably do now is um, I've noticed a little couple of little pieces that have uh, been left over from the from the extrusion process on the 3D printer. So I'm going to trim those off with a sharp scalpel and then start picking out some of the colours or some of the sort of highlights, I suppose, of what's possible on this. Um, I'll probably put some uh, red in around here. You can see there on the sort of jaw line. Obviously the tongue is gonna to get a good coating of red. Uh, and then the tiny little eye spots we'll have to put in as well. And then we'll give it a wash at some point and uh, see if we can pick out some of the detail that's uh, on the bottom of the body and then sort of uh, maybe dry brush some of the areas on the on the top of it so we're going to give this a bit of an ink wash and what I've done is I made up a couple of uh, ink washes just with a drip or two of this uh, sort of grey acrylic ink and I've got a, a black one for the base as well and I'm going to put this on first and then I'm going to dry brush it afterwards just because it's uh, just the way I like to do these ones or this one um, I'm going to start off with some of the black so I'll just give that That. I might actually put a bit more water into that one. And then we'll do the same with the grey. I think I'll give a Thank you. 
and then we'll let that dry and see what that comes out like. So we're going to give this one a bit of a uh, dry brushing. Um, I've got just a little tiny bit of straight white in this one. And in this one, I'm actually going to put a little bit of gunmetal, actually. So I've got a feeling that might give a little of a shine to the... armour on it. Well, not armour, arm body plates. So, with the white, first of all, and that, and then basically take most of it off. I'm going to try it on a just an old coin, just to see if it's all off. A little bit more. really just to put some highlights on it in this case now See what happens with the uh, gun metal. Might not sharp too much on uh, the camera. Again, give that a bit of a test first on an old coin. Too much of that. Yeah, about works. So we'll get rid of those. And then, of course. Get some to stick this on to. Got a bit of red for the tongue and for the eyes. I'll probably use a pin to do the eyes, I think they're rather small. It gives me a nice little dot basically.
I'm going to need an eyeglass for this one. So, Seems to have got that. And then the other thing of course is just to give the uh, teeth a bit of an outline. Need another. fine brush it says that's like a 3 0 treble oak There isn't really teeth on the uh, print of this, but just by giving them some little little dots. Sort of gives the impression of them. And something I've realised I wanted to do as well is in between the jaws uh, there's a little bit of an area that I'll give some red to. So I'll use the same brush. See if we can pick out these areas just inside there. Give it a little bit more colour. Back in the eyeglass again for that one.
I'm gonna do the trick I think. Now that is gonna dry and then we'll uh, clip off the uh, cocktail stick that's holding it and uh, mount it on the base and see what it goes. It goes like then. So first off I'm gonna give the we've printed a base um, on the 3D printer. I uh, just made a little base and then put a slight terrain on the top of it which sort of saves modeling that. Um, and then I'm just gonna paint the edge of the case edge of the base with some semi-gloss black um, and we'll give that a go and have to let that dry so just going to give it a first colour like this and then we're going to actually do trim the brim off actually afterwards gives us an idea where it is Then once it's dry, I'm going to paint the top with a sort of, I've got a couple of greens and khakis, just give it a base coat and then I'm going to put some scatter on it, uh, which is like the standard sort of model railway stuff really, so it's, uh, and I've also got a little selection of uh, grasses and lichen, um, just give it a little bit of a pop, um, and then I think I've got some Old, old bushes, bushes as well. So this, but that is supposed to be a shark that swims underground. So uh, it makes sense to put it on a outdoor base uh, rather than something stone or brick. So that's the base. I'm just going to let that dry, uh, give the brush a clean. So we've got the base painted black. Um, I'm going to start with some, what's this one? Uh, this is a olive green. We've got a khaki drab, so I think we'll give it most of it. Um, Olive green. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a nice dark green. And most of this will be covered up with sort of grasses afterwards. And I think what we'll do is it'll we'll keep and let this dry, and then we'll just sort of dab it a bit with some browns or some of the khaki, anyway. So. So 
So we've got that. I'm going to try and get that. Do that done. Gently just running the t side of the brush down there. Really to get rid of the any of that white PLA showing through. Always goes uh, butter side down, of course. Um, there we go. That's okay. There we go, and then uh, we'll let that dry off, and then uh, start on some browns, and uh, then start with the the grasses and uh, scatter. So we're going to add some uh, some khaki here just to give it a little bit of a difference in colour. I'm really going to just dab a little bit to this on, really, just to I'm going to do that and then just rub it in a bit with a tissue. just to break up the block green um, but in really the ground is earth So because the trick or the problem with the uh, 3D print, even when it's sort of like a fairly fine resolution, is you've got lines in it. So that's not too bad. Need a little bit down there. So that's going to give us like the effect of some. Earth on there. And pretty much while that's it doesn't really matter about this one too much because we're gonna put grasses on it. Um, I've got some of this just hobby craft clear glue, it's just like PVA. Um, dries clear. Just put a little bit of that in a cap. Just put a little bit more in there. Then with an older brush, I'm just going to dab that on. Um, so the idea here will be to where we're going to put the grass, or where we put the glue. That's where the grass is going to stick. Now, let is kind of his legs will go there and about there, so we kind of want to. Keep away the grass too much to make help make that stick under it, right? 
and then eat. There you go. Smear that around a bit. Now I'm going to put a bit of paper under this because the grass goes everywhere. And I've just got some old flock. Uh, these are quite quite great granular. There's quite some heavy foliage. And then this is like sort of like quite fine. So this question is just sprinkling it on. Kind of like that. And give it sort of general covering. Then just to break it up a bit, I'll put some heavier pieces on, like that. And then with the glue, quite remarkable that it kind of you can just keep, you can drop, you can get a bit of water as well. You can drop the glue, drop drops into it, and that will just like with surface tension, just goes through the whole of the grasses, and like lets them stick. Because the last thing you want them to do is come off. And you'll see like a, and then eventually that surface tension breaks and it gets just sucked in. It sucks in the glue, and uh, sticks quite well. Now we've also got uh, to go on here some. I've got some of these, which is just a bit sort of uh, knock grass from railway, and some lichen, 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 lichen moss basically. And then also I've got some of these, which are like brush bushes. So I'm not going to overdo this stuff too much on this one. Just have a just get a bush on the corner there. There's a bit of grass over there. Yeah, plenty of glue on it, it kind of disappears really. I've got some tweezers which are going to help with this bit. I can just grab. It's going to focus, but it's kind of quite strandy. Look at that, and just stick that in as a tuft there. Nice little sort of spiky looking bush. And that needs definitely a bit more glue to stick on that. So, I'm kind of letting that go in like that. And then I'm going to drop a bit of water through it. glue stick that down when it dries. Um, now we'll just have a look at the way it's going to 
it seems we've got it, we might as well have it on there. Kind of looks like branches and things at that kind of scale. In fact, I get a piece of the. kind of looks like a little log or a branch that's kind of the base now that will take a little bit to dry um, and the next thing we'll do after this is uh, get on to finishing off the model okay we're into the final bit now where we're gonna take this and uh, mount it to the base so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take off this uh, stick that we've got And then I'm also going to run a file just a little bit across the base of the feet just to take off any sort of high points just to give the glue a little bit more a chance to grab. that shows up should have a black sharpie somewhere and work out how to put it where to put it on the base so put it away that way and I think I think we'll have it around that way. So and the glue. Got a bit of grass movement going on over there as well, so I'm gonna give that a touch of the old super glue while we're here. Do the trick quite nicely. So that 
that's a 3D printed bullet painted on a base. Thank you.